presence. Well, yeah, guys, there we go. Um, I suppose what's kind of weird is like the one time I the one time I don't brand it as um, the finale is the the time we actually finish it, which is um, <laughs> quite mad, of course. Um, but wow, what what a journey! What an absolute journey. And me and Deathwish kind of touched on this a little bit um, before the stream got going yesterday. Um, I did kind of want to save like the discussion or go back to the discussion once we got to the end here. Um, but yeah, um, all in all, when I first like played this game, my initial impression was it felt very much like the original like Z Legend of Zelda game that came out on the, on the NES all those years ago, back in the 80s, I think it probably was, on the NES. Yeah, 80s. Where you kind of explore an open world and you're going around to find new things to let you progress to new areas. And that's very much how it kind of felt for a start. And what's really good about this game is I think the manual system plays a big part of like how this game becomes absolutely amazing and fantastic because as you find those items and as you progress through the game and as you find more of those pieces of manuals it kind of gives you more um ideas and more little hints of information of things you can do and as the game progresses, you, you you just find all of this extra stuff that you didn't even know was included in the game, like the songs, the spells. Um, I mean, the, the whole Golden Path quest and, and was just phenomenal, like having to go through the manual and piece together all like 25 different pages of the manual, which then even went into like a separate save file that it creates. It's just, yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So completely and utterly blown my mind this game has um there's very I, I feel like there's a there's a few similarities to like the way outer worlds played out in that you start off you're exploring but as you learn more you can kind of find shortcuts and easier ways to travel not in like the um as as much and as in detail as outer worlds did but it definitely has an element of that indeed um and in a way it almost kind of to me moved away from a like action um fighting game and it turned into more of a puzzle game now i guess that kind of depends on how you decide to play the game um i'm sure there's lots of people out there who probably just go and play the game for the fighting aspect and for the adventure aspect and possibly don't even touch any of the puzzles at all but that's just like the route that i took and yeah definitely from about halfway in, I, I kind of felt that it turned into more of a um, more of a puzzle kind of game than um, uh, an action adventure game. I probably would say if you weren't looking at it from the puzzle aspect and you just went in from a um, from like a, a fighting a adventure kind of aspect. I kind of feel like the combat and the enemies are potentially a bit lacking. Like I don't feel like there's a lot of variation um, at times in like the different types of enemies that you fight. And the bosses are really good. The only criticism about the bosses that I didn't like uh, I don't know if this is common in a lot of games, but I, I didn't like the fact that the boss movements were kind of a bit random and a bit sporadic. Um, but other than that, there were some really good, tough fights, um, especially like the, the final fight that we did last night as well. We had to kind of think about the strategy uh, to employ it in the correct way to, like, to help us get through the best way. I mean, I think, like I said last night, the, the strategy we employed in the end, I think, was just like the God strategy, um, for lack of a better term. Just like, you know, use all the lures, keep hitting it with, hitting it with the guns. Um, and it's just like, it was, to be fair, the in the end, the final fight was probably 
the easiest fight in the game because of that strategy I employed. Um, but yeah, it's def I can definitely see like, and I think it was probably apparent from me at times that you can make this game a challenge because there is no, because there isn't like a linear path as such. Um, you can go and you can tackle the bosses at different times. And I think LB, you've, you've mentioned in the YouTube comments about like most people tackle this boss and then this boss and this boss. And I kind of did them out of order, which is probably a reason why I kind of struggled a bit. But to me, that was more looking at it from an RPG kind of style, whereby I needed to go away from that area, grind out a bit more, find some more strength, find some more ability to then come back and tackle the boss. So I guess it kind of depends on your play style. Um, I think I was kind of a bit all over the place. I was like madly into it, trying to explore like 20 different areas at the same time rather than trying to follow a path. And that's just the way I played the game. So, you know, different people have different experiences of the game. That's probably where they, a lot of them follow the, the regular path um, through there indeed. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, when you have games that aren't linear and aren't forcing the player down a certain path, I think that it's good because it opens it up to interpretation to um the uh, the player and how they want to play the game rather than forcing them this is what you are going to do and this is how you're going to play the game so yeah all in all absolutely fantastic game um i'll stop being the rambling man for five minutes and let's say death wish have you got anything that you want to say about the game at all from your opinion i mean you pretty much said it all uh i would say that for me personally uh, if I had started this game and stuck with it, I, I think I would have been pulled into the, like, what is, what do these symbols mean? What does that mean? And I would have been pulled into the puzzle aspect of it and not yeah. just the, okay, I'm just here to, to fight and here's a boss. Okay. Move along, fight these guys, get more change. Here's a boss. Continue on. Uh, if that was all there was to it, I would have I would have stopped playing. I never would have gone very far. But seeing that they do put uh, like symbols and and areas that you can't reach, that's one of the big things uh, for me was that you see things that you can't reach, and you know there's got to be something, some way to get there. Yeah, but you don't know how yet. So that that would intrigue me to keep searching for stuff and uh, on, instead of just ending it and being like moving on like a normal idea that would be like okay how do i get there i want to find this i want to find this way and then you see there's symbols and there's patterns you know there has to be something to them it can't just be there at least that's the way i think it can't just yeah. be there for just for looks and all that stuff so yeah uh that's i think it really uh if it, as long as you stick with it for a certain amount of time to start with, it'll suck you in. Yeah, I, I think that's that's kind of like, I think um, one of the things is I think the game rewards the person or the people who can um, commit to it. So like I said, it, it starts yeah. off a bit slow because you know it, it is all fighting it is all action adventure in the in in the first part of it but like i say the manual to for me was like the big thing of like mystery and wonder it's like oh i need to find out and then you're like you're flicking through the manual oh i'm missing so many pages here i wonder what it says on this page or i wonder what it says on this page and it was kind of like that yeah it, it was that wonder and that like intrigue which really hooked me in um well, and then that's, that's what kept me watching and yeah you know and following following these uh while you played it because i found it quite intriguing myself so yeah uh and and i think if i would have actually played this I, I probably i wouldn't have gone as far as you have but uh for me i would have definitely gone a lot further than i thought i originally would have when you first started it's, it's almost like they kind of start you out like here there's some easy stuff. Uh, there, there's some stuff you can see that you can't do. And, and then if you're paying, as long as you're paying just a modicum of attention to any of it, then you're going to be like, huh, 
wonder how to do that. And then if that if that intrigues you enough, you continue to search and uh, go for more and more. And, you, and the more you do, the more you find out, the more you find out, the more you can do and so on. Yeah. You see, my, my, my initial kind of thought process on like the whole, because obviously the manual, you, you see the manual, and it's like, well, that's not English. What does half of it say? My initial thought was like, the more you progress through the game, you'd kind of like almost automatically understand the language and the symbols would start to translate like for instance if i can go to like the if i go to the manual the which page is it in particular sorry let me um let me just go back to my main scene a minute the this page here with like the the teleporting maps i honestly thought like as i visited the, like the three bottom locations which are symbols i thought okay so once i've been to them places i know what they are maybe the manual would update and i think we we had that conversation quite yeah, early on didn't like, we, we like thought, it would change to english yeah we, we we thought it would change to english i i never in a million years thought that we would have to kind of like manually work out what each of those symbols were and how the language works and i must say and i must say and um I don't think it spoiled anything in, in the way because of obviously the depths we went into it. But I think if you hadn't have mentioned like LB, like a few streams before we even started tackling the language thing about the, um, about the front cover and the fact that the um, symbols said um, secret legend top and bottom. And I, I said this, this, I don't even know like where I would have got started with the translation. I don't even know if I would have even been able to like even make any form of progress on the translation if I didn't already know based on comments that like that's what that said. So um yeah. yeah. Probably, probably would have. Uh just might have taken a little longer to kinda because I think a lot of people that figured it out on there I know LB's smart, uh obviously, but I think uh I, I, well, I have a feeling. I'm just, I'm just guessing here, going out. I think a lot of people will go, okay, there's got to be a way, and and do end up getting there because they're persistent, and they, and they find, you know, more stuff like you did, but just not as fast because they don't have, they're not using any hints or don't have any hints or or anything, and just kind of things just kind of fall into place at some point or click at some point and go oh wait a minute you know so instead instead of you doing it one stream it might have taken them an equivalent of 10 streams yeah so, you know i think he would have got there it just might have taken a little longer yeah uh, you know i don't know just kind of i think i think like what what I, another thing that I found like quite interesting as well is like when I after I started playing I did Google kind of like what the like average playtime was and I I kind of, I find it quite interesting that it said like the average like a casual playthrough of this was about eleven hours whereas a completionist playthrough was about twenty two hours right. I've been sat here for 40 hours. Yeah, and there's no way. You've got to be I mean, a goddamn genius to get there yeah. in 22 hours. I, I, guess, I guess what they're possibly saying from completionist is all of the achievements, which doesn't necessarily include, like, translating the language, finding out about the music, yeah, doing be. all the music stuff. I mean, that there's would just be no absolutely way. crazy. There's no way an average of 22 hours is for you want to know all of that no way it has so obviously to be just, as as i got standard game uh, based on that information that i'd read I, I was quite surprised like when i was getting into sort of like the the, the late 20s early 30 hours i was thinking well i i, I thought this was only a 22 hour game to fully complete um even like my casual playthrough when i was like getting to like sort of like streams like four and five knocking on that 11 hours and just over 11 hours i was thinking how much more can there be? Because like a casual playthrough is supposedly 11 hours and I'm still going. I'm nowhere near the end. So yeah, it was quite a surprising length as well. 
um, for me. LB, you, you're, it wasn't overboard as, at all. Um, we always enjoy um, waiting for those um, those, those peeking eyes or the confetti cannon to be uh, yeah, a little, displayed a little subtle, in chat. So um, hits, yeah, yeah, you, you have a you have a knack, and it's um, it's it's a good it's a good thing. But you you definitely have a knack of being able to say things without giving anything away. You, you, you're quite good yeah, at like very much. subtle hints. So I don't think I mean, there's even, any. Even what he told me uh, yesterday and uh, the um, uh, that's yeah, still I, I I got what he was saying, but like I like I, I didn't have the uh, a printout or anything or a screenshot of text to to it's like I and I wasn't gonna do it because I'm watching you do it so. But it, yeah. but, it, but it gave me an idea of the process, basically, kind of behind the scenes. And I, I got what I would need to do for the most part. But yeah, I was like, wow, that's insane. But yeah, uh, I think it, he was definitely subtle enough. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think there's ever, I, I don't think there's ever been, eating. I don't think there's ever been one time where LB has like said something and I've, it's like been instantly like. Oh yeah, that's what it is, because it's it's always been like some sort of subtle subtle little nudge in the right direction. Well, those um, those, eyes, those eyes did give it away for me on some of them, but uh, just because of where you were and when he did it, so I was like, ah, okay. But but at the same time, I agree with you because I don't think. I, yeah, there, it's like there was something here, and I think it has to do with this, but uh don't know exactly what it yeah. is, you know. And then you just you got it, and then as soon as you started doing something, and then I saw I saw something else, uh, like like especially when it started getting into the D pad patterns, I, I kind of got that. Uh, I think a little, a, a little, a little earlier on some of the things, but yeah, if it wasn't for the in-between stuff between what you did and in the googly eyes, and I, I, I never would have got to that point for myself. So yeah, it was fun right, so to follow along. One, one thing, one. So final, final question. Obviously, um, we've um, we've we've summarized quite well, I think, on this. The burning question is, um, flowers, the flowers LB. So do the groups of flowers always mean the same thing or do they, are they just pointing you in a rough direction of a secret? Just as a final sort of question here to sort of wrap up, but guys, that is it. Um, we are at the end of our tunic playthrough. Like I said, thoroughly enjoyed. All right, so a group of three flowers uh, by a wall denotes an explodable wall. Okay. Time to blow up some more walls. So, so like, what about like the flowers like here, like for instance? Well, those are kind of random, but it did. I, I think, I think we both ever thought that. Like the, to me, the bottom left looked like an arrow of flowers. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder if it was just like pointing down to, because that looks, it looks like an arrow, like a jaggedy, straightish line with the two on the side, like go down that way. Yeah, there was a secret down there. I'm pretty sure. Or it's pointing to the little shack down below, which I think there was something in there. So, okay. But I'd say the amount of secrets in this game, uh, it, it's almost hard to to overthink anything because it seems like if you're not thinking in that direction, you're not gonna find things. So it's almost like you need to overthink it in a sense, even though you're not you might feel like you are, but you're really not because it's the game really has that depth to it. 
that you know you need to really think outside the box with stuff to get there yeah. even even if you're wrong on on stuff i think you have to be thinking like out there to, to truly get to these uh things and then when it hits you it's like ah okay boom yeah okay now i got it and then everything starts coming together like it did on so many, yeah. especially quite a few of the streams where you just you would hit one and then you would go to uh, okay now what and then okay i found this found that oh here's another thing and boom 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 you were just knocking them out of the park one after the other uh because they kind of followed the same or a similar sort of strategy with slight differences and uh but yeah it was uh thoroughly enjoyable especially uh you know as a person who never thought that i would be watching somebody play games in my life uh, uh you know uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching you play it and uh and then lb's comments and the, the whole the whole interaction between everything and the way everything worked out was just just a load of fun uh, yeah well it's always uh, it's always like i say it's it's great to have you uh great to have you on the stream buddy great to have you along for the ride i appreciate it um but yeah i think that's uh, a good place to to wrap up guys so uh thank you very much everybody for being on the journey thank you very much to lb for the donating the game in the first place um i'm glad that you enjoyed this uh the playthrough lb um so yeah thank you everybody uh, for being here one interruption what are you playing next It's, do you have a stream tomorrow? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll I'll think about that tomorrow. We'll we'll deal with that tomorrow. Hey, Super Meat Boy! God damn it! I I, I donated that game to you. You need to finish that mother. <laughs> I tell you what. I I will make I will make a I'll make a cold hard promise to you right here right now. Okay. Once, once, I am done with all the gold berries oh on Celeste. My God. Bar, oh my farewell. God. I will <laughs> dedicate the same amount of time and effort into Super Meat Boy that I have Celeste. You have my word. Boy, I better see some non-stop Celeste playing, man. Because tomorrow on. night we're playing Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's uh, messed up. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much. As always, I appreciate you all. <laughs> and until next time, I've been Nock. You've been awesome. Take care, stay safe. And until next time, happy gaming. Bye, guys.